Now, remember what a one-form is. It is something that eats a vector and returns a scalar, and it does so in a linear fashion. Let's dig into an example of a specific one-form, alpha on R3, given by 2dx minus dy plus 3dz. If I feed to this the vector u given by 0, 0, 1, what is the scalar that this outputs? The natural thing is to take 2 times the x component, minus 1 times the y component, plus 3 times the z component, that's 0 plus 0 plus 3. Alpha of u is 3. All right, let's feed it a different vector. Let's say v given by negative 4i minus 3j plus k. Then alpha takes twice the x component minus the y component plus 3 times the z component. That's what? Negative 8 plus 3 plus 3. That is negative 2. If I change the vector that I input to alpha, I may get a different output, but it does so in a linear fashion. So if I feed it the vector w, that is 4, 3, negative 1, that is it's minus v, then alpha of w is going to be minus alpha of v. Instead of getting negative 2, we get positive 2. Now if you're paying attention, you are probably thinking to yourself, hey, this is just like taking a dot product with some vector. Alpha is encoding, taking a dot product, in this case, with the vector 2i minus j plus 3k. And in fact, if you go way back to volume one, when we first introduced dot products, one interpretation of a dot product was as an oriented projected length along a certain direction. And that's one good way to think about what a one form is. I like to think of it as something like a ruler where there's a direction against which you're measuring the projected length of some vector v that you feed it. But this one form also has a scale on it and it has an orientation. You can get a positive or a negative number as a result. In general, it's, it's difficult to visualize these algebraic one forms, but thinking in terms of rulers is maybe not so bad of a way to go. And in particular, it helps us with understanding one form fields. What's a one form field? That means you have a one form at every point in space, but these can change their orientation, their scale, their direction. So for example, if we looked at the one form field y dx minus x dy and said, well, what does that look like? Well, it's rotating in a clockwise direction about the origin, much in the same way that the dual vector field yi minus xj rotates, as we have previously seen. But let's think about this more specifically. If I pick a point, let's say x equals 1, y equals 4, and evaluate the one form field at that point, then I get 4 dx minus 1 dy. I get a particular linear one form there. But if I change the location, if I move to the point negative 2, negative 1, then my one form field evaluates to minus dx plus 2 dy. So I get different one forms when I evaluate the field at different locations. And then if I feed it a vector, let's say the vector u given by 2i plus 3j, I'll get different scalars at different locations. So at the point 1 comma 4, if I feed u to the one form there, I'm going to get 4 times 2 minus 3 times 1, that is 5. But if I feed that exact same vector u into the exact same one form field, but at a different location, at negative 2, negative 1, I'm going to get negative 2 plus 2 times 3. That's equal to 4. So 
again, I like to think of a one-form field as something like a ruler field. That is not a perfect analogy. You shouldn't take that one to the bank. But if it helps you remember that a one-form field is doing something like taking a dot product with some vector at every point in space and that this can vary from place to place, then that's not a bad way to start. There are some more complexities involved, but we could, for example, go back and look at the simple example we did of a linear one form, 2dx minus dy plus 3dz, and we could imagine that one form as being constant and oriented in a certain direction. Now, these one forms, these one form fields, they're not that weird. In fact, you've seen some of them before, you've computed some of them before, disguised as gradients. Remember, when you have a scalar field, F on Rn, then the gradient field, back from volume two, was computed as a vector field on Rn. Grad F at a particular point is given by partial F partial X1, partial f, partial x2, all the way up through partial f, partial x, n. I can think of that as being a vector at every point in space. But there's also the one form field given by partial f, partial x1, dx1, plus partial f, partial x2, dx2, all the way up through partial f, partial xn, dxn. Now, if I think about this, on the one hand, I've got a vector field on Rn. On the other, I have a one-form field on Rn. They have the same exact components, but are interpreted differently. Now, we've computed one-form fields before. DF makes sense via implicit differentiation. It's just now that we have a different language for it. Now, the gradient one-form field and the gradient vector field and the derivative of F are all connected. If I look at a particular point and I take a vector u, a vector of, say, rates of change, then df with u fed into it is a scalar. It's the same as the dot product of the gradient of f with u, and it's the same as taking the derivative df as a matrix and multiplying the vector u by that derivative. All these three things are connected, but now we have a bit of new language. We have the language of one forms that we are going to use extensively.